Hello, my friends. Nice to see you today. Nice to have you with us today. This is Brother Des coming to you from the prophetic Bible teachings for Sunday, August the 27th, 2023. Today we continue our teachings with or in the book of Daniel chapter 7. Last Sunday our teachings covered the vision's effect on Daniel the prophet as seen in chapter 7, 15 through 16. Today we'll be teaching on the saints will overcome the beast. Daniel 7, 17 through 18. The prophetic texts tell us in verse 17, these great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. Verse 18, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. The above prophetic texts cover or scriptures cover a couple of things. It's really about heaven's interpretation of the four beasts and what happens to their kingdom. So I have broken this into two parts. First, we will discuss the four beasts and their kingdoms. And second, we will discuss the saints who will be possessing the kingdom. Let us bear in mind that this interpretation is coming from coming to Daniel from a spiritual being who's around the throne of God. So in Daniel's frustration of the visions he had received from God, he wanted clarity as to what was happening. Let's study. As we first look at the four beasts and their kingdoms, the person from around the throne of God told Daniel that the four beasts are four kings and four kingdoms. This is really a reiteration or a repeat of this prophecy. This is within the law of double reference as found in God's word when God wants people to take note of what's taking place. So as we look at these beasts and the kingdom, or the kingdom and the kings, we see the first beast and his kingdom. The first beast was Nebuchadnezzar, together with his kingdom was Babylon. And he was represented by the head of gold and the two-winged lion. The second beast and kingdom was the Medes and Persians, they had kings such as Darius and Cyrus who represented the empire each at his time. They were presented as the lopsided bear and the chest of silver, showing that there was a, a double, you know, leadership, the left-sided bear. One up and then he straightened up. The third beast and kingdom was Alexander the Great, synonymous with the Greco Macedonian Empire, and is depicted by both the sides of brass and the animal of panther. These wild beasts of prey, with their carnivorous and voracious natures, are representatives of the character of both the king and the kingdom. And so the fourth beast and kingdom, the Roman Empire was the beast of a kind, yet within it was traits of all the other beasts. Who was the king of the Roman Empire? According to history, it states that legend, the legend is, the first king of Rome was Romulus who founded the city in 753 B.C. upon the Palestine Hill. It is noted that he established Rome's early political 
military, and social institutions and wage war against neighboring states. It was also noted that his twin brother, Remus, assisted him. So that's the four beasts and the four kings and their kingdoms. We now come to the second part regarding the saints of God who will possess the kingdoms. Verse 18 tells us, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. The above verse is stating a fact which will occur over time and will involve many other events. Before this event of possessing the kingdom by the saints of the Most High or the Ancient of Days, there will be the rapture of the believers of Jesus Christ. There will be the manifestation of the beast, the Antichrist. There will be the great tribulation on the earth for seven years. There will be the return of Jesus Christ from heaven as the King of kings and Lord of lords. There will be that great day of battle of Almighty God at Armageddon, which will be conducted by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, at his return. And then there will be the judgment of Israel, where he will judge Israel. And there will be the judgment of the Gentile nations, which we see in the sheep, the parable of the sheep and goats told by Jesus. Yes, many events will take place. Nevertheless, it will come to pass, for the saints will take the kingdom. So the question remains about these saints and taking the kingdom. Who are these saints that Daniel is predicting about? Here in the book of Daniel chapter 7, we find them, these saints, mentioned in verses 21, 22, 25, and 27. Also in Matthew 27, 52 through 53, the word used for saints is hagios, which also identifies Old Testament believers who came out of the graves after Jesus Christ resurrected. So note, and the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. This event was before the Great Commission, which Jesus gave to his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel as death, burial, and resurrection. Therefore, we know that these saints reference to Old Testament saints. Also, in the New Testament, as I mentioned, the word hagios for saints occurs some 200 times. 99 times of it refers to or translated with the word holy, which refers to the Holy Spirit. So in other words, saints or the holy ones of Jesus Christ is what in order. However, before these saints take the kingdom, the little horn will make war with these saints in the great tribulation. So that's pointing to who these saints are. Daniel is speaking about. So who are they? First, it must be noted that in the Old Testament, God had Old Testament saints, as we mentioned, and saw how they came out of the grave when Jesus resurrected. Remember, he led captivity captive. Those who were in paradise, he had to take them all out and carry them with him to heaven. So as in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it reminds us, absent from the body is present with the Lord in heaven. Paradise was moved. So the nation of Israel 
we find in Exodus 19.6, are also referred to as saints, going back to those who came out of the grave. Note, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Priests and a holy nation. Holy. Holy people or nation in the above refer to saints. Second, the Gentiles who came in as proselytes, proselytes and became Jews by practicing Jewish faith were also called saints. For example, in Acts 2.10, Phrygia, Phampilia, in, e in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya and Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Acts 13, 43 says, Now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. So they were following. And then we look in the New Testament, the saints today refer to, they are of the called out assembly of God, which is referred to in common language, the church of Jesus Christ. Romans 12, 13 says, distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. Romans 15, 25 says, but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Philippians 4, 22 says, all the saints salute you chiefly. They that are of Caesar's household. Fourth, we find in the New Testament, they also mention saints who will be in the great tribulation on the earth. Revelation 13, 7 states, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. That's in the great tribulation. Those who come to, to Jesus Christ through the preaching we mentioned prior of the 144,000 and all the others. And to overcome them. And power was given to him. Over all kindred and tongues and nations. That's the Antichrist. Coming against the saints. Therefore we conclude. That in the New Testament. Saints are used to speak of the holy ones. Who were once sinners. But have been declared righteous. Because of their faith in Christ. Looking back to the finished work. On the cross. Romans 1.7. However, in the Old Testament, saints were believers who were looking forward to his finished work, to the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So by faith, they looked forward to the son who was coming. As we, as believers, we look back to the finished work which he already done. For example, let's check the Old Testament looking forward. In Hebrews 11, 24 to 26, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, a steaming note, the reproach of Christ. Huh? Great Moses, the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasure of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. Moses looked forward to the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. The famous preacher, or the, one of my favorite teachers, McGee, he noted, it, he said it this way. I quote him. Don't get the idea that your little group is the only group that will be saved or even the idea that believers in this dispensation of grace are the only ones to be saved. God saved people before the day of Pentecost and he's going to be saving people after the rapture. God is in the saving business. Maybe the church is failing to reach people with the gospel as it should be, but God is not failing at all. That's McGee in his book on Daniel. So, however, when we look back at the reference used in the book of Daniel referring to saints, they are, those references are referring to the saints of the Israelis, the believing remnant 
Those who will turn to God. This has nothing to do with the church or the call out assembly of believers of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we can conclude here. There are Old Testament saints. There are saints of Jesus Christ who make up the church. And there are saints who will turn to God during the great tribulation on earth. They will be resurrected and follow the resurrection program as listed in 1 Corinthians 15, 22 to 24. That's the resurrection program. Note, for all in Adam, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ. Note, all shall be made alive. How? Every man in his own order. There are groups. Christ the first fruits. Jesus Christ was the first person to be resurrected from the dead. The first fruits. Second, the second group. After a day that are Christ at his coming. That's the believers of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, those who trust Jesus as Lord and Savior. And the third group, then cometh the end when he, Jesus, shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule, all authority, and all power. This great event will occur at that great day of the battle of God Almighty at Armageddon. This is what Daniel is referring to, where the kingdoms of this world would be given to the saints of God who will be the remnant of Israel, those who will turn to God during the great tribulation through the preaching of the 144 young Jewish preachers, the two witnesses at the gate, of the city of Jerusalem and the flying angel preaching the everlasting gospel as the great tribulation ends. I explain. Israel will be restored. They will repent and accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah. They will receive the promise that the prophet Joel spoke about and which the Apostle Peter mentioned on the day of Pentecost. Note Joel's prediction. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old man shall dream dreams, and your young man shall see visions. 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. 30. And I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and a pillar of smoke. 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and terrible day of the Lord Jehovah comes. 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Jehovah shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord had said. And in the remnant, no, the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Note, Acts 2.17, Peter used a portion of this prophecy. It was partially fulfilled. Note. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And Peter stopped there. There is no more. That's on the day of Pentecost. But there was no wonders in heaven, no fire and blood, no pillow of smoke. Nor has the terrible day of the great tribulation come as yet. Right now, among Zion and Jerusalem, there is no deliverance, for there is much confusion, war, and division. 
Only when Jesus Christ returns to Mount Zion, these things will occur. At such time, the saints will overcome the beast because of the appearance of the Son of Man. The beast will be defeated and the saints will live with God forever. As we think about it, our lessons for the day about saints we're talking about. To be a saint of God today, a person must come to Jesus to receive eternal life. 1 John 5, 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may hope, think, feel, know, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Come to him today and be a saint. Trust him. And you who are saints, continue to share the word of God. In case anyone missed the teachings on Daniel chapters 1 through 7, the book of Daniel, or all the book of Revelation, you may retrieve them on YouTube under my name, Desmond Michael Covey. You may also follow this ministry on YouTube, Facebook, my story, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Also, check out the website, www.corbenjay.com. You may also check out Threads. That's our new media. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Amen. Amen.